Yeah. yeah. You want me to start? There you okay. go. We're all good. Enough. All right, we're back. <clears throat> all right. So uh, we just want to thank everybody, first and foremost, for taking their time out of their day. Uh, we know it's a Saturday. There could be a million different things that y'all have going on in y'all's lives, and y'all chose to uh, make this meet possible. And without y'all, this meet does not happen. So we want to first uh, say that uh, taking y'all's time out of y'all Saturday means so much to us. So we, uh, we plan on having a great meet. These kids and competitors have been talking about it for, man, literally months now. And so it's kind of crazy that it's finally here. So uh, just to reiterate, we're going to go through the entire kind of PowerPoint, just go over some generic uh, information, specific duties, um, and things like that. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask at the end. So without further ado, and I know we're kind of on a time crunch, and it's a 7 p.m. on a Wednesday. So we'll try to get you out of here as quick as possible. I forgot how to go to the next slide. All right, so first thing, it is gonna be at Rain Athletics Gym. I know a lot of y'all are already members there, uh, but if you don't have this, we'll send this PowerPoint to you guys. Uh, this is the address, it's 3300 Jensen Drive, uh, right off of 59 North or South, depending on which way you're coming. Um, and the first lift is at 10 a.m. So <clears throat> with going on to the next slide, um, just as kind of the process of checking in. So for all volunteers, um, as soon as you walk into the gym, if you've never been into it, there's going to be a check-in desk on your left uh, that you'll normally scan in, and there's going to be our entry desk to the right. Um, there's going to be uh, either one or two people there. We would like to have all volunteers be checked in by 9.15 in the morning by the latest, uh, depending on your shift. If you're in the afternoon shift, uh, please just come to the admissions table to check in, and we'll show you where that is here in a little bit. Uh, but like I said, we love to have everybody situated and at their roles by 9.30, so that way by the 10 o'clock spot, we are ready to go and we are have the lifters on the platform and it's hot by 10 a.m. So just because we like to have everybody out of there at a decent time on a Saturday. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we'll have uh, a pre-lift meeting just to go over any final details and safety regulations. Uh, y'all aren't required to do that. This is really just for the competitors. So like I said, we'd like to have y'all in these positions by the 930. And that's just because that's when the spectators will start arriving. And uh, as soon as you check in, we'll just say your name, your ID, and we'll kind of guide you on to where to go. Um, let's go ahead and go. And this is going to be the schedule, the tentative schedule. I know that uh, people didn't have really any preferences on where they wanted to be. Uh, the main thing is what we needed was spotters because that is, uh, given the safety regulations and the uh, necessity of it, that's kind of like our main uh, need right now. So if you have a problem with spotter or being a spotter, please let us know. Uh, that is something that we can definitely work around. And so uh, we would love to give y'all estimated and exact times, but given that some people there is a 90 second time period for each lifter, it may, some may go really slow, some may go really fast. So we would try to give y'all estimated times, uh, but for the other uh, volunteer role, your name is on here and I'll send out this roster uh, tonight after the meeting. So there is going to be two shifts. So if you prefer to be in the morning or in the afternoon, please just uh, reach out to us via email and we'll get that situated for you guys. And uh, this is just, uh, we'll go over a couple slides of like what uh, the gym will look like day of. This is going to be entirely cleared out. So uh, this is where you walk in. Again, if you've never been to rain, this is going to be the warm up room. It's going to have a huge rain sign like welcome to rain athletics. You walk in this back room, come down. Uh, there'll be an admissions table right here and concessions into one. So uh, this is obviously you'll see uh, this table or uh, sliding door will be open. It'll be pretty evident on where to go and to check in. So if you're on the admissions or concessions, this is where you will be. Um, this is going to be the layout of the actual meet room. This is going to be considered the powerlifting room that is at Rain Athletics right now. Uh, again, this entire room will be cleared out. Um, there's going to be chair rows from on this side and on this side. It's going to be going all the way back. We expect it to be pretty busy in here, and it's going to be pretty hectic. So the main thing is to clear this walkway at all times. We're going to we already re reiterated that to the competitors, uh, just because I know there's going to be family, friends, other lifters watching, uh, people on the lifting platform at all times, and so we just want to have as much room as possible because. We don't know if a competitor is bringing one friend or eight family members. We are kind of a guessing game and it is a pretty compact room. So we want to fit as many people as possible 
have the energy high and get it um, as much, basically use the room to the best of its ability. And so this is what's gonna be the actual lifting platform side. This lifting platform is gonna be basically an eight by 10 step and repeat. These were the three judges. If you are a judge, this is gonna be the main judge number one, which is gonna be Junior. I'm not sure if he's here today. I think he might be at work right now, but we really appreciate you being the main judge. I know he's gonna kill it. Um, Estevan and then our buddy Kendall, which I don't believe also is here due to work constraints. But um, as soon as the lifter gets off this platform, they'll go directly to the scorecard table and then the lifters will funnel in and out of this room. And that goes back to this right here. Uh, this is the warm-up room. Again, this is really more or less for the lifters. So really a lot of the admissions role or the volunteer roles don't have to worry about this room. But again, this is like room or the room right as you walk outside of the concession stands, you'll see uh, a lot of the lifters going in and out of this room. Yeah, one more thing that's pretty evident, I think, but just to be said out loud, if you go back one more, actually, yeah, is it one more? Yeah, so where those judges are, obviously in front of them is the lifting platform that lifting platform will be where the spotters and the weight handlers will be as well. Um, and you guys will be staring at a TV to dictate what kind of weights you will put on. And spotters will also be listening for commands from the judges, um, just an FYI. And we will dig deeper into that. Uh, if not today, we will day of. Yeah, and so okay. um, what I still want to kind of elaborate on that, there's gonna be a rough spot of the TV um, and for you spotters, they'll have, everything will be calculated. So you won't have to ask anybody, hey, how much do I have to put on for, for Joe Smith? Because he's lifting 375 kilograms. It'll be, everything will be on that TV. It'll say three reds, a white and a collar. And it'll be very simple, very smooth. And so um, it's gonna be a little crowd in this area. And so uh, once we get everything set up Friday, we'll definitely make sure to um, get the space um, equivalent. So there's enough room for the judges and for the spotters as well to be every, or to make everybody safe as well. Glad you elaborated on that because I definitely would forgot. Um, so just kind of going on to specific duties, um, the admissions table. So this is, um, we're gonna have the table, like I said, blocked off right before the entryway. Uh, so each person that enters the room, whether your family or friends will have to uh, have a colored wristband. So just the generic, generic ones. So that way we can kind of keep account of how many people are going in and out um, it is a free entry, but obviously this is a charity powerlifting meet. So we really encourage whoever is at the admissions role and taking um, this role head on just to say, hey, uh, be really polite about it. This is going to a charity or the Challenge Athletes Foundation. So um, we know that it is free, but we love to, um, you know, y'all to make a donation for whether individually or for a family. And so we'll have a QR code uh, for you guys that is right beside y'all. And so hopefully the goal is to raise as much money for this charity as possible. So, so just a side note, if they already have the blue wristband, you have to give them the whole spill twice, but that is the whole uh, kind of objective for the meet is to raise as much money for the foundation. Um, and then the lifters, when we check them in, just so you know, they'll have a specific uh, colored wristband that'll be green. So no need to stop them. They're going to be coming uh, in and out consistently. So Again, there's no need to even uh, try to stop those guys. They're going to be on a crazy amount of pre-workout and going wild. So I wouldn't even want to try to stop them. Uh, going on to concession stands. So like I said before, they are going to be interconnected. So one is going to go vertically. One is kind of go horizontally with all the food layout. Um, we're going to have pretty basic um, concession stand food from candy chips, protein bars, other snacks. Uh, I think Esteban mentioned a good idea, liquid IVs. Um, and so we're gonna have like a menu there for y'all as well. And the same thing, uh, we'll have Cash App, Venmo, and of course cash. Um, we'll try to keep it for Cash App and Venmo because I know it's easier for everybody. Um, and it'll do be, or be divided into two shifts from the morning and the afternoon. Um, and then like I said, um, they are gonna be combined into one. So pretty easy, obviously pretty simple when it comes to these two or two types of roles, but it isn't very important um, on these. So it might get pretty hectic when the meet starts, especially from uh, the break times too. Um, the logistics, um, it's, we will get with y'all uh, specifically on the logistics role. Basically when that warm up room, like I showed previously, we just want to have someone in that back room because I know it's going to be hectic uh, on walkie talkie to say, hey, the end of there's 
I guess we should restart Estevan and kind of say there's three lifting groups. So there's 30 competitor total competitors, and there's going to be divided into 10 uh, different lifting groups. So groups of three. And so they'll go 10 at a time, they'll three or do three attempts for squat, bench, and deadlift. And so once group A does their three attempts, uh, once we're getting, hold on one second. Uh, I feel like a pure bad echo. Okay. Let's make sure that wasn't my computer. But once group A is almost done with the first lift, uh, with the first lift, we want to have someone in the back to say, hey, group B is almost up. Um, so we, I know we already uh, communicated that to the lifters. Hold on one second, guys. You're good in here, bro. We're, we're not hearing any of that. No, it's okay. I just, my bad. I was getting off, but basically, yeah. so uh, we just want someone to have, basically be a logistics roamer to make sure that the lifters are ready uh, for, uh, to get ready to step on the platform. And again, we'll kind of get with y'all one-on-one day of, uh, right before you start. So, and again, we'll have walkie talkies communicating back and forth. And another thing, uh, just to mention, there will be rosters, you know, taped everywhere and there will be, um charts and all kinds of stuff everywhere so uh resources will be there for sure for sure um so specific duties this is called the next lift recorder um steven i know i already got with you to be this uh person or take on this role head on uh this is going to be the person that as soon as they get off the lifting platform again like we said they all, they do have three attempts so to know uh, what we need to implement into the computer system to be shown on the tv uh, they have to go directly to this uh, role to say, hey, I'm going from 80 kilograms to 85 kilograms. So uh, basically, they'll do the lift, they're stepping on the platform, execute the lift, and then come directly to you to implement into their next weight attempt. So really simple. Again, Stephen, I'll get with you to uh, make sure you have that system down. Um, and so this is a big one that me and Esteban can definitely dive deep into, and this is going to be a lengthy one because obviously this is one of the most important ones and probably one of the most um, for not only safety, but there's a lot of things going on with the spotters at all times. So um, there is going to be kind of a generic layout. So um, if you don't know the power or basic rules of powerlifting, please get with us, contact us one-on-one. -on -one. We can kind of go over it pretty basic right now. Esteban, do you kind of want to go over like the judge's commands to like know, uh, just like to see how, like, how a, a generic lift would go? Yeah, so uh, I, I want to preface all of it by saying that squat will be the most complicated um, for two reasons. Um, and not only just most complicated, the most uh, risky or lethal. So the most attention needs to be paid to there uh so in squat you will find the most weight in the most dangerous position and the most commands so uh one generic command you'll find in all three lifts is the main judge once we're done putting all the weight on properly that the person needs um they will basically say platform ready and what that means is one of the uh, people at the table so one of the logistics person We'll turn on um, a timer for 90 seconds and the lifter has 90 seconds to get to the bar and begin their lift. What does begin your lift mean? That means um, I can go through each one of them actually. Uh, for squat, you will have to make eye contact and get under the squat bar, shake your head yes, that you're ready. And as soon as you pull um, the bar off of the rack, that is considered a start. So you have 90 seconds when platform is ready to get your position ready and everything. So as a uh, spotter, what is important here? Um, actually, as a, a weight handler, what's important here? Make sure as soon as you put the weights on and they're all locked and loaded to back away, give space so that the lifter can come in and get situated. Then the next important thing is uh, pay attention to the main judge. Wait until he gives them a... Um, I start a start command. So the squat guy will look or squat, the squatter will look at the main judge and shake his head. Yes. He will announce that he's ready. So he'll say start. Once he announces start, he he's able to pull the weight off the rack. Um, when he gets to a squat position, 
he will will basically say down. And once he goes down, um, he'll be also told to go up. And then finally, the last command is to rack. So that's what a squat looks like. Um, as a spotter in general, you're there to be a safety net. You're not there to make sure um, that the weight goes up and down for his lift. So just let the weight come to your hands, basically. And if you look at the image in the top right, they're giving it a very comfortable, you know, four to five inches in case um, the lifter does lose control. So you will know that as soon as the bar goes down in any way. Um, so not stays neutral, but starts going downward. That is when it's your time to um, help get the bar up. And that doesn't mean you need to lift the whole thing because the lifter should be helping you get the bar back to the rack. So that's just squat. Uh, another one uh, to keep in mind is with bench, it's going to be very similar commands. Um, there's some differences. Uh, one difference being at the very bottom of the lift, they're actually going to be on their chest a lot longer than what a typical squat is like at the bottom. So again, only, only start helping whenever the weight, either, either they ask for help or if the weight starts going downward. Um, um, and then deadlift is a lot simpler, not really need for spotting. There's only one spotter needed really. Um, they will stand behind the deadlifter in case uh, they get too high on pre-workout and, and sniffing salts and pull too much weight and they lose, um, you know, they, they lose their air or, or go unconscious. So that job of the guy behind is just make sure they stay stable. They don't fall backwards with the deadlift weight. So always keep your, you're not going to, you're going to basically keep your hand at their high, like upper back to make sure they don't fall back when they're lifting the weight. Um, deadlift is the simplest one. They only get one command. All they're looking to do is is to um, they tell them to lift whenever, so they lift on their own time. Uh, the only command is when to put it down. Um, other than that, I think bench press is very similar to squat. Uh, is there anything I'm missing, Kyle, that you can think of? I would think you're not didn't uh, miss anything. I would just say uh, for spotters to make sure that these guys uh, and girls they're going to be especially on their second and third attempts they're going to be grinding it out. So what may look like a, a 10 second rep, it may happen because they're pushing all of their effort onto this one rep max. So please give it time, uh, just kind of in the bullet points. If the lifter says communicates, says, hey, I can't get it, then that is obviously your cue uh, to go ahead and rack it and put it safely back onto the bar. Uh, if the weight does start to go, if they're lifting up and then it suddenly drops in a downward direction, that's another cue. So obviously it's pretty generic, but like I said, these guys are really going to be pushing the hardest. So some reps may be pretty slow and they might be shaken um, and they literally will push everything they have onto it. So just don't be, because if it touches, if y'all touch the bar is considered a faulty lift. So just make sure that uh, y'all be wary of those kinds of things. Okay. Um, for judges, we we know we've kind of talked to y'all individually already. Uh, and like I said, Junior, Kendall, um, and Esteban uh, will be the other judge. So really for the people that are going to be the spotters, I know that's kind of important. And for uh, the next lift recorders and the system operator, I guess the main thing for the judges that you need to be looking for, um, this isn't for the judges, this is what you need to be looking from the judges, is the difference between a good lift and a bad lift. And so, so say, for example, squat, uh, the competitor uh, steps out, competes his lift, follows all the commands, uh, racks, um, and then two of the judges put up white sign, and then one of the judges puts up a red. That is considered a good lift. If all three judges put up white signs, that is considered a good lift. Uh, for a bad lift, you're going to say the competitor does the same thing. Uh, but you see two red sign or three red signs, that is considered a faulty lift or a bad lift. So that's, again, for people who are either in the scorecard table or the systems operator, that's what you need to know, uh, most importantly, from the judges. And we'll be sure to synchronize all the volunteers that are in tune with making the decision and making sure we all know the cues. So making sure we all know the words the judges will be using so that we're all on the same page. So we'll do that day off.
Yeah, so um, from that, I believe that is uh, considered all the roles that we have as of right now. Um, again, we can't appreciate y'all enough. We actually have almost more uh, volunteers right now than the allotted slots. So uh, we'll definitely communicate with y'all, especially if you're in the afternoon shift, that there, if there is everything taken, we definitely don't want to waste your time. But if there is, that's why we kind of wanted to go over every role. Um, just so you can listen to it and kind of get a generic idea because we may have to slide you into a different role if you're comfortable there, with it. So there will be two other roles that are kind of ad hoc. One being um, communications in the back room for the lifters. That's one. And the other one that um, we might need help with is also running a table um, for the company. So those are like all the things that you could potentially be doing. And um we will make sure and clarify day of if um because what could happen is we end up just asking certain people to show up at a certain time so that they can do the job then and then someone can come for the second shift but for right now this very moment it seems like everyone needs to be there for the majority of the day so we will clarify if anything changes yeah, so, um, and I know a lot of people, again, had work or other obligations, but is there anybody that is on that had any questions? Any questions? All right, so it seems like it's simple enough. Again, uh, just I think the main points is if you're in the morning shift, we'd love to have you there by 9.15 at the latest, so that way we can delegate you into your role. Oh, also another thing, uh, as soon as you do get there, uh, you'll get checked in, um, like I said, right to the right, and then you'll grab a shirt. So um, we do kind of require y'all to wear a shirt. It's going to be just a generic Peak Classic strength shirt. Uh, if you want to color coordinate with your outfit, it's just a black shirt with uh, purple text. So uh, super comfortable shirts. So that's really the only thing that I think um, that I missed. And again, if there's any other questions that you do come up, feel free to ask us, shoot us a text. Um, I'll put this PowerPoint in an email along with the YouTube link of this meeting. So please feel free to ask or ask us. And um, again, I know I can speak for Esteban as well. We really appreciate y'all uh, taking time to make this meet happen. I know the competitors are really excited. I know y'all are gonna see the energy there and see it come to fruition. We put a lot of hard work into it and again, y'all, are definitely the ones that make this meet happen. So just want to thank y'all. Um, Esteban, have anything else? Yeah, uh, the only other thing is please invite friends and family if you guys want, because it is an open gym. Uh, we think Rain Athletic is a really badass gym. So make sure to get the word out for them as well. Um, would be really cool. Yeah, if y'all, after your shift. Oh, also, uh, we do, we're not going to let y'all starve. Uh, after, so there is going to be two breaks. Uh, one 15, one very short break in between. It's going to be about 15 minutes in between squat and bench. And then uh, there's going to be a longer 30 to 45 minute break in between uh, bench and deadlift. So in between that one, uh, say if you get off at the one o'clock shift, feel free. We're going to have Chick-fil-A sandwiches for you guys. Uh, feel free to grab a bag of chips and we'll have like soda, Gatorade and water, uh, whichever you prefer. So like I said, that's going to be your meal. Uh, I totally forgot. We're not going to like, leave y'all hanging. And if you do want to bring your own meal, uh, there is a microwave at Rain. So if you want to bring uh, anything personal or snacks or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that is, I think that is it now that I can think of. So if there's anything I missed, I'll definitely add it into the email. So I think you're okay, all good. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Hope you have a great re rest of the Wednesday and we'll see y'all here in a couple of days. Thanks. Appreciate you, Stop the meeting right now. There we go.